Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you're all doing well. Today I'm bringing you another paracord doglish tutorial and this time we're going to do the crown knot paracord doglish. Unlike the previous ones, which I have mostly braided, this one is made using knots. The crown knot, which is the basis for this tutorial, is stacked one upon the other until you reach the sufficient length. As such, this leash is labor and time intensive, but the result is well worth it. It is one of the most comfortable leashes that I have made so far and it was fun to do, although it was a bit hard on the hands at the very end. So, as far as the supplies for this project go, for a three and a half foot leash, you can see them stated below. These are two longer cords, then you will also need two shorter cords, each about three feet long, as well as a snap hook, a lacing needle, some scissors, and a lighter. So with these supplies ready, we can start our dog leash. We're going to start by attaching our two working cords onto our snap hook by feeding them through and making sure that each end is of equal length. Going to line them up and tie a Matthew Walker knot. Start with your left cord, go around your other cords and into your loop. With your second cord, go through the first loop, around your other cords, and back into the second loop. With your third cord, go through your first two loops. then around and into the third loop. With your last cord, go through your first three loops, then around and into the fourth loop. With this we have our Matthew Walker knot tied and what we're going to do now is very slowly and I mean extremely slowly, tighten it up. Now once we have done that, we're going to take our cord on the left here and place it right next to the cord on the right. We're going to do the same with the second cord and then shape our knot into a square shape. And with this we have formed a nice looking decorative Matthew Walker knot and again we're going to do some more tightening. You're going to have some cord remaining at the bottom of your knot between the snap hook and your Matthew Walker knot and we're going to pull this cord through the knot and out into our working ends. Now with this done, our Matthew Walker is complete and we can now start our main technique of stacking crown knots. Now place each of your cords onto one side and then take one and go counterclockwise over your next cord and then do the same with your next cord, going over counterclockwise and then over again over the next cord and with your final cord go into your first loop created by your first cord. Then pull on all of your ends to tighten up your first crown knot. And this is our main technique. It doesn't matter with which cord you start and all you do is take one of the cords and place it counterclockwise over your next and then with your next over the next and so on in a circle and with your last cord go into the loop created by your first cord. Then tighten up 
and keep stacking those crown knots. This will produce a spiral effect that creates a round leash. Continue making your crown knots until you have used up all of your cord in your ends except for about 3 feet remaining. If you want to do a multicolor version of the leash, you just need to replace one of the cords with a colored one. This will create a two color spiral look in your leash. I have stacked quite a few crown knots and I have about 3 feet remaining in my ends. I have marked the length of my leash at about 3.5 feet and I'm going to use the rest to make a handle for the leash. We're going to work in the 4 ends following the 4 strands in our leash. So what we're going to do is take a lacing needle and one of the cords and we're then going to simply work in this cord into our leash following one of the cords and doing this for about two and a half inches. So try to follow one cord which is not always easy but it doesn't matter if you make some shortcuts because we're going to hide this joint piece with a decorative knot. So as mentioned, work in all of your cords for about 2.5 inches into the leash. So once you have worked in all four of your cords, you have a very strong bond or splice and we can now cover this with our four cords and create a multi-strand herringbone knot to decorate this joint section. So I have wrapped around my four ends two times and I'm then going to take the left of these ends and start a sequence of unders and overs going under four times and over four times. So under, over, under, over, under, over and one more time under over. So 4 unders and 4 overs. And once I have done my first cord, I am going to take the next one at the bottom and I am going to start here at the bite which I created with my previous cord and again go under over under over. So 4 unders and 4 overs.
So now I'm going to take my third chord and enter in the next byte which I just created. So this one and go under, over, under, over and so on. Always make sure you have four unders and four overs. And we're now at our final chord, so take that one. And again enter at the byte that you just created. Going under, over, under, over. And with this we have tied a 9 part 4 byte Turk set. And we're now going to make a herringbone pattern out of it. First we're going to double all the chords going to the right side. So take one of your ends. Remember that we have always exited with an over one. And we're going to start by going under our next working end. And then follow the standing end on our left. And we will do this with all four of our chords coming out at the right side. So take your next chord. I'm going over two here since I've already worked with my previous chord. And go under your next working end. Then follow the standing end on your left side. So the second chord is complete. Take your third chord, which again exits over two. Go under your next working end. Then follow your next standing end towards the right. And we have just one more chord remaining. So again we exit with an over 2. Then enter under our next working end. And follow our next standing end all the way towards the right side. And with this we have doubled all of the chords going to the right side. We're now going to do the herringbone interweave by using our ends at the right side. And since we have exited the knot with an over, we're also going to enter the knot with an over 2, then continue under 2, then over 2, under 2. Over 2, under 2. And finally over to under 2. We're going to do this with all of our ends. The same procedure. So take your next working end. And again over 2, under 2 and so on. All the way to your left side. Remember that each over and under splits a pair of parallel chords. This makes it much easier to see where you're going.
We're now going to do the third chord and again start with an over two, then under two and so on. And finally with our last chord we're going to do the exact same thing, so start with an over 2, then under 2, and so on until you reach your left side. Now, once we have reached our left side, we can now tighten the knot, but before you do that, place your working ends under the knot towards your right side, and at which point you're going to get a nice looking knot. This is a finished version here, and you can see that I've worked in all of my ends onto the bottom of the knot. We're now going to also decorate the front side of the leash, so here we're going to use two 3 foot long cords, and we're going to run them through at the very beginning of our first crown knot and make sure that both of your cords are of equal length, so about a foot and a half each. And we're going to do the same with our next cord, but we're going to go at a 90 degree angle, basically creating a cross. And again, make sure that this pair of cords is of equal length. We're now going to wrap around all four of the cords around our leash. So wrap it around once. And we're then just going to take our first two cords and wrap them around again. And with this we can create a 7 part 4 byte Turk's head. Now we're going to start our weaving and with our first cord we're going to go under over, under over and finally under over. So 3 unders and 3 overs. With our next cord we're going to enter our first byte which we just created and again do 3 unders and 3 overs. We always finish with an over. And then take your third cord and start with your next byte which we just created and again under over under over until you reach your left side. And now with our final chord, enter the newly created byte and go under over under over until you reach your left side. And with this we have prepared a 7 part 4 byte Turk's head which we can now make into a smaller herringbone knot. We're going to do the exact same process again, which we did before, so take one of your ends Go under your next working end and then follow the standing end to your left side Take your next end and always remember that you exit the knot with an over, in this case over 2, and then under your next working end and then follow your next standing end all the way to your right side. Now 
we have two more chords that we need to get to our right side. And again, this one exits with an over 2, since we just used one of the chords to follow. Go under your next working end. And then follow your next standing end to your right side. And now your last working end. Goes under your next working end. And then follows your next standing end to your right side. And all we need to do now is create the herringbone interweave, which is done by going over when we start. So we're going to start with an over two. Then go under 2, then over 2, under 2, over 2 and under 2. Take your next working end, it doesn't matter which one. And again go over to at the start. And then continue splitting pairs. So over to under to and so on. And again, take your working end and start with an over two. And now our next and final working end. Again, work it in, starting with an over two and splitting pairs to the left side. We're going to finish this herringbone knot the same way, which is to feed our working ends under the knot towards your right side, then tightening it up. And with this, our leash is complete. So guys, I hope that this tutorial was clear enough. It is a fun and very comfortable leash to do and to use. In any case, thank you for joining me and see you next time.